Hello. All right, quick video to explain from Gray P. Chem from the Five Steps book and the diagnostic exam, uh, number 42, which is right here. It's looking for which of the following um, does not have one or more pi bonds. So what's the difference between a pi bond? What is a pi bond? What does that even mean? So uh, there is a difference between what's called a pi bond and a sigma bond. Um, here you can see that in ethylene or ethene, um, back to organic chem here for a minute, um, what you have is a double bonded uh, carbon. So with a double bonded carbon, what's essentially happening is that they have to have overlap of two different shells, okay? So you can have a single bond, and you can have a double bond, and you can have a triple bond. Okay, so how does that work? Well, here you can see that if you have a one, if you have one bond, one overlap, and that is not ethene here, um, that would be just a regular um, sigma bond. Okay, whenever you have an overlap of your S subshell, it's a sigma bond, okay? If you have to form a double bond like you do in all the, all the alkenes, like this one, um, then you have to have a secondary bond happen um, to form that double bond, and that's always gonna be a pi bond. So anytime you have a single bond, it's always going to be a sigma bond, sigma for sig single, right, and pi, for double or triple. So every bond has a sigma bond, but not every bond has a um, double or a, a triple bond, which would be a, um, a pi bond. Okay, so just to review, sigma is a single bond and pi represents a uh, double or triple bond, okay? So what I mean by that is if we had this atom and this atom, oop, that's, that's a sigma. And if we had this, it's one sigma and one pi. Should be using either the symbols or the right now uh, for these, that doesn't make too much sense. And then here we have a triple bond, which is one sigma and two pi. I'll take two pi's, please. All right, so let's look at these. Um, in order to figure this out, this is why these questions are kind of hard. Um, in order to figure these out, what you have to do is uh, look at what their structure is. <laughs> okay, so you have to figure out what their bonding structure looks like, and from that, uh, determine you know if it's going to have a pi bond or not. Okay, because it has to have a double bond in order for that to happen, right? So for SO2, um, you would put what in the middle? You'd put an S in the middle, that's right. So you put S in the middle, and if you're using Lewis dot, you know, try to figure that out. Um, they have the same amount of electrons, which is kind of problematic, right? They're both in the same family, um, sulfur and oxygen, so they both have six electrons. Um, so there's no real way for this to work without having a double bond, because oxygen wants a double bond, and sulfur wants a double bond. So there's gonna be a double bond somewhere. Um, and I'm gonna put it on this side, with my oxygen in red, why not? Um, this is what oxygen likes to do, right? Double bond, keeps its electrons, and eight now, totally happy, fine with that. <coughs> Sulfur's actually all set as well. Um, that bond fulfilled its needs. Uh, if you circle the sulfur right now, you'll notice it has eight electrons in there. So what about that other oxygen? Well. It's going to do that unequal sharing thing oxygens do on this side, like that. And 
the structure, therefore, would be like this. We have a sigma, and then we have a sigma and a pi on this side. So that one uh, would not be a good choice. All right, let's look at SF6. Um, like we mentioned, um, sulfur has six electrons. And whoopsie do, all six of them are going to be bonded to by a fluorine. Okay, so can we even draw this? Um, let's just do it like this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Kind of evenly spread out. Ooh, you know, if we were doing um, Vesper, that would not work, right? Because it that does not follow any of the Vesper guidelines. Actually, this one didn't either because it had a lone pair of electrons. Whoops, let's forget about that. There are no lone pairs of electrons here, though. It's just sulfur, single bonded to everything. I think we just found our answer, right? Because these are all single bonds, so they fit that sigma. There are six sigma bonds here to all the fluorines. All right, let's look at the other ones, though. So oxygen, like I mentioned before, likes to form double bonds because it has six electrons and it wants to have eight. Everybody wants to have eight, except for boron and some other metals. Well, all the metals, pretty much. So in this case, in O2, we do have a double bond occurring here between our oxygens. So it'll look like that. So we have a sigma and a pi. Okay, so no go there. Lastly, we have SO3. Actually, SO3 is just like SO2, except see these extra electrons right here? That lone pair that I forgot about? That's where that other oxygen connects. So we have the, the tetrahedral, um, not tetrahedral, we have the trigonal planar shape because you have the sulfur in the middle. You have a double bonded oxygen on this side. You have a single bonded oxygen on that side. And you have another single bonded oxygen up above. That does have um, two sigma bonds. Um, and this is a sigma bond and a pi bond. You'll notice, even though it's unequal sharing, it's only counting as a sigma bond, okay? Um, it's not some weird pi bond anyway, um, but it is uh, following the single bond, sigma bond, um, double bond, sigma, and uh, pi. Pi is always the second bond and double bond, and the second and third bond in a triple bond. All right, thanks.